Hi guys, it's me, Kathy, Mrs. Handy. Are you? How you guys doing? You having a good summer? I hope so. We're doing really good here. Mr. Handy's doing well, and I'm doing okay. And I've been out in the garden a lot, so it's been a great summer so far. So anyway, I thought I would start out with um, something interesting that it's it's so funny. Uh, what well, what I was doing was anagramming Joseph Patrick Kennedy Jr. and I, I spelled out Jr. And then during all this anagramming, the site that I use, uh, I think it's wordsmith.org. I'm pretty sure it wasn't working, and it wasn't working over so many letters, you know, and I had too many letters. I'm mean, normally it would have taken it, but it must have been overloaded. So what I did get out of it was you anagram his whole name, like I said, spell junior. And these different word these different words were excuse me, are within his name. So in Joseph Patrick Kennedy J U N I O R you find, I'll, I have, as usual, I have everything written down, you know, no memory right now. Um, we have Jupiter, which I think that the good guys, some of them at least, are from Jupiter. I think that's like a good guy place. Maybe there's bad guys there too, but I, I assume there's not one area that's all good or bad. But I think um, the, good, the good guys we talk about are from Jupiter. And then we have jury and uh, prank and joker. That makes sense, doesn't it? We had the two jokers at Guantanamo with uh, Bush Sr. in the middle. You know, um, that was a photo that went around for a while. Um, pinky uh, is another word that's in his name. And I, I know that sounds weird, but Juan Osaven wears... I, I suppose what most people would call his dad's ring, but we know among us that it's his brother's ring. His brother is JFK, and he wears it on his pinky. So it's this uh, valuable ruby ring that President Kennedy wore, and it seems that uh, Junior is wearing the same ring on his pinky. Then we have ninth, and we know that that's a a big deal because nine is the highest number um, and trip and president no not president <laughs> well it probably is president Kennedy <laughs> but our favorite Anon you know 17th letter mentioned trip a few times in his posts and like trip canceled and things like that so trip is in his name and John along with Krypton, like that's one way of looking at it. So it's not just John, it's John and Krypton fits, it, you know, comes out of his name. So of course, then you have John and Johnny, you know, and trios, T-R-I-O-S, and rink. And now rink makes me think of not just skating, it makes me think of um, James Rink, who put out that wonderful video series about reincarnation and it wasn't really explaining reincarnation but it was like the story of Saint Germain and uh, I don't have a link for it but I hope hopefully you can find it and so James Rink did it and it's almost like it was a maybe it was like a four or five part video series and then when I found it it was all in one so it was, to me, it was really, really long because it wasn't divided up. But certainly you could, when you find it, you could divide it up and watch it in segments. And uh, he explains how, basically, to me, it was President Trump that was all these different people and kept, you know, moving on and up and then coming back to where he is right now. And they never really said that, but that's the feeling I got. So, yeah, so I said prank and joker, so I got that, and so I've got a lot of little, a lot of little things that seem important, and uh, so I love Jack Benny, 
you know, I just love old old shows, old radio shows. That's why I love Cary Grant. Hi, Cary, again. Uh, I love Jack Benny. Hi, Jack. And uh, I don't have the gematria on Jack Benny. I know it's important, or he wouldn't have had that name. I just know it. So, but he always refers to, in, in so many episodes, to what a movie that bombed, that he, he made his only movie because he was a radio personality, really, and then a TV show personality. Uh, so he was on since the 30s. And then in the late 50s into 60s, he was a TV personality when TV was, you know, new. So the, the movie that bombed, remember that word bombed, was The Horn Blows at Midnight. Now, he brought that up all the time. If you watch any Jack Benny episodes for any period of time, you'll hear about a joke pertaining to, oh yeah, that's the movie, The Horn Blows at Midnight. Oh yeah, we know about that movie. It'll come up over and over. So I should have spelled B-O-M-B-E-D. I might get in trouble for saying the word. Eh. Um, so to me, I'm looking back at things now with a different different eyes and you could think of that word as alerts of n-u-c-l-e-a-r-a-t-t-a-c-k right and other potential disasters could the alarms go off at midnight now that would be you know most people would be in bed um at least the east coast right if it was an east coast alert at least the east coast would be in bed <laughs> won't be they will be in bed everywhere but so i did i put in gematrix.org and and in case you're new it's, there's always a few new people so bear with me you guys that know what's going on uh, gematrix gematria is a equals one through z equals 26 and it's called bible coding or codes so what you do is apply that value, like A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, to the word or phrase that you want to understand. It could be a newspaper headline. It could be something President Trump said in a rally. It could be anything. And see what you come up with for matches in this Dramatrix.org site. And uh, there's three choices when you're using it and if you're new there the first one is jewish the second one is english and the third is um the one we want it's simple so when you see three choices pop up you hit simple you enter your word or phrase or your initial like letters if you're using all capitals from a paragraph that kind of thing um you can do that and then hit simple because that's the choice excuse me, that's the choice you want. And then a bunch of matches will come up and you see what your spirit tells you is what you should write down or enter on your computer or your phone for a match. So, um, and you'll see a number value. So you might want to keep track of what the number value is for that phrase or word, which I never do. I kind of, I kind of have a few in the back of my head, but I, I go through so many that it's hard for me to remember. And I know sometime I will remember everything. So I'm not worried about it. So the horn blows at midnight. It's brought up so many times. It's not a coincidence as there are none. And that's 264 when you put it in gematrix.org. And that equals like what we're talking about lately with um, Adam and Eve or Jesus and Mary or the Jesuses, the Adam and Eves, you know, that the plurals. We can't go on running away is a match. Um, and then that phrase that comes from, you remember when George W. Bush was in Florida and it was just before everybody knew about 9-11 and nobody knew and it hadn't been on the radio, uh, the news at all. And he was sitting there, and the kids had a storybook that they were supposed to be learning from. They were 
grade school students. And I'm sure that the White House picked this out ahead of time. Because it, it, it just had to be. It had to be like that. And their vocabulary words from this story were, went like this. And it matches, okay, what we just said. The horn blows at midnight, 264. And it's a, the match is kite, plane, must, hit, and steal. Now, that was the kids' vocabulary words before, right before the planes hit the WTC2. WTC, I guess you should say. So that matches the horn blows at midnight. So it's like chaos, right? That's an implication of chaos and things happening when you associate it to WTC. So another match is person, woman, man, camera, and TV. So a man and a woman on TV, somebody's doing a video of it. So something's happening. So that matches as well. Michael, the Archangel of Thunder. So it could be the storms that we're expecting. Message from God in November. That's interesting. And another 264 is, this is only the beginning. I believe it. Then we have, pull out all the stops. And then one thing leads to the next. Then we have Trump, Trump, Trump. And we say that at rallies, you know, everybody go Trump, 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 just like that. And uh, that matches the horn blows at midnight. I don't think it's a coincidence. Because, you know, in the, in the rallies, they have people all spread out throughout the rally that are part of the rally, part, part of the people that work for him. And when you hear chants just pop up, I think that they're in there starting it all around the room, all around the stadium. They're all starting it, you know, really strongly, a few of them in different places, and that starts a chant. So I don't think it's just happening. Uh, let's see. Then we have a match at 264, the horn blows at midnight. Hitler's plutonium, B-O-M-B. -B. That matches they will believe God has come. Right? Everybody's waiting for the end of the world. Like the chaos and the horrible things happening and they're waiting. A lot of people are, not everybody. So they will believe, believe God has come. Then we have nucle uh, useless nuclear bunkers. Alien presence all around us. Like Project Bluebeam. Um, makes the day dark with night. So I think that's going to be, I don't know when it would start or what day by any means, but there will definitely be an eclipse from what, all the things I've decoded. And it won't be one of the expected ones. It will be unexpected. And earthquake, November 11. I'm not saying this happens November 11, but it matches, you know, and we're supposed to hear a huge earthquake um, after Revelation 11, 3. I think it's 3. I will need a tranquilizer is a match to 300, 264. I will need a tranquilizer. There is truth to be told. That could be, you know, pertaining to the fireside chat that I'm expecting. All is well, and all will be well. So don't freak out when it looks like, you know, the alarms and bells and maybe the fire whistles all go off. Who knows? Uh, church bells. Think about Christopher Cross. Uh, he has a phrase in one of his songs. When the church bells rang, I was gone like the wind, you know. Because I have a church right down the street, and every day I hear the, the bell at noon. And I'm thinking, well, when's it going to ring that's off the, off the time? And, you know, is this going to be part of the alert? Besides the, the cell phones and everything. 
Okay, so now I'm on to something else. That was 264, and it was, uh, I already forgot. The horn blows at midnight. You know, I don't know. You talk about short-term memory loss. You're right here. Eric and Laura Trump named their daughter Carolina. And lately, I've been thinking, okay, Carolina is such an, a, it's a beautiful name but it also pertains to North and South Carolina. And they've mentioned that in, uh, you know, at different rallies in North and South Carolina. And don't forget, we named our daughter Carolina, you know, like we're right with you. But I've been thinking about it as, okay, is this a location for the beast episode? You know, off the coast in the water. So I'm sorry about the noise. I've got the microphone right, you know, right by my papers as usual. So anyway, um, they're on Jake Westbrook's channel on YouTube. Jake Westbrook is definitely a white hat channel. And Jake Westbrook's uh, photo there, that's supposedly him, looks like Junior in a mask to me. I mean, you, I know you can look like anybody, but I mean, if you can look like a monster in a mask in Hollywood, you can look like anybody. So to me, it looks like it's him. And there's a Dean Martin song. Well, and also, wait, wait, Jake Westbrook. It's a JW. J for John and W for his one of his aliases. When he's called as, as just W for, as he said, over 16 years at the time. Well, that's 17. And uh, he called his W. So that, that's the reason W is important. And W is 23. So whenever I bring up 23, that's a, that's a W reference. Uh, okay. So on Jake Westbrook's channel, which is all like, um, like fun, mm, older songs. Some are even from the 20s. And some are into the 50s, 60s. And uh, how do you explain Jace, Jake Westbrook? Um well, like, my favorite one is called um, Coffee, and I think Coffee in the Morning. And you, you know, I put it on in the morning ever since I found it. I put it on every morning on my phone when I'm making coffee, and I play the songs. And there, there's, like, jazz and, and some funny songs. You guys should listen to this channel. And uh, I feel like I'm at a jazz brunch or something. And... Uh, Anyway, so what, one of the songs on Jake Westbrook's channel is Dean Martin singing Carolina in the Morning. And that definitely sticks out to me because of thinking about Carolina being a significant state, either north or south. And uh, so he's singing Carolina in the Morning. And it just, that could happen in the morning. I mean, that whole song has been so popular forever. When did he start it? Maybe it was the late 50s that Dean Martin started that singing that song. I don't remember. And there, nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. You know? And he talks about buttercups and on and on. I mean, it, it's important. I just know it is. Or it wouldn't have been on that channel. So... It's, I think it's going to happen in the morning when everybody can be at home seeing it. So, you know, obviously I could be wrong. I could be wrong on every single thing I say. This is just theorizing about my decoding. And sometimes you don't even have to decode. You just listen to something and you hear, hear it. You don't have to do gematria on it. You just listen to it and you, you think, well, the double meaning is X, Y, Z. Um, okay, so... Then the last song after that on the same coffee in the morning for Jake Whisper's channel, it's a song that Bing Crosby sings, and it's not even listed on the, you know, when the credits are given down below, if you hit the little arrow that explains more things about the songs, it's not even listed. So it's definitely kind of sticking out as something different. Because it's not listed, they don't mention Bing, 
you know, it's funny because he starts the music um, in that on that video, on that channel for coffee in the morning, and then he ends it. But the second one, he's not given any credit. And he says, oh, when the truth is found, I hope it will be good to you. All I'm saying is have a nice day. I hope it doesn't rain on your parade. When it all comes down, I hope it doesn't doesn't land on you. Was it land? Yeah. And then the radio was playing, but it was so hard to hear. The words that they were saying, I had my elbow in my ear. It's kind of funny. You should listen to that. So it's kind of like a, a kind of like a, a a reference to things like, okay, well, I hope you can tell them the truth because when you're judged, that's it, man. That's it. You're you're done one way or the other. So when the truth comes out. I hope it doesn't land on you. I mean, it's kind of like this slow-paced song. And then he says at the end, what I mean to say, I hope you have a real nice day. Kind of like sarcastically. So I, I thought that was an interesting, interesting bunch on there. Sorry, I'm going to get my papers organized, make some mess. How long have I been talking, you guys? Tell me, tell me. I don't have a timer or anything, but tell me what's going on. That's why I get these things so long or so short. I don't have any. I don't know. My watch stopped. I need a new battery. It's terrible. Anyway, enough of my problems. <laughs> um, so Bite Sized Audio, who you know I think is uh, Junior. First, I thought it was both. Well, it's probably both. Yeah. It's probably both uh, President Kennedy and Junior, but yeah, uh, uh, it was on bite-sized audio, one word, bite-sized, which is like eating human DNA, Pac-Man, right? I think that's what it means. Um, it was. It's by Simon Stanhope. I don't have the decode in front of me, but it all means something if you decode Simon and Stanhope. And it's so the story is supposedly by G.K. Chesterson. And the story is called The Oracle of the Dog. And uh, I just did this one. So <laughs> it starts off with I'm most awfully, well, not starts off, but a little bit in. I'm most awfully sorry. That's 1615, comms 15. He said with sincere distress, I beg your pardon for being so rude. Pray forgive me. That's because of what happened at the cross and in the Garden of Eden. So Fines looked at him curiously. I sometimes think that you are more of the mystery than any of the mysteries. Anyhow, even if you don't believe in the mystery of the dog, at least you can't get over the mystery of the man. You can't deny, at the this is the key part, you can't deny at the very moment when the beast came back from the sea, it's 1644, and bellowed his master's his, and bellowed, his master's soul was driven out of his body by the blow of some unseen power, that was 1650, that no mortal man can trace or even imagine. The beast in the sea. Revelation 11, read it. Um, at 1817, he said, as if he had been a cyclops, with one eye, and then 1818, in the middle of his body. Then they're talking, I can't go into the whole plot, it's really involved, but at 1830, he's talking about a pin on this man's coat. The pin, as long as the stiletto, I think, that's a reference in my opinion to Melania's stiletto heels that we would see all the time. And to me, 
that's when Jackie was playing Melania. Now, I know we talked about uh, Princess Diana in the past because of Gematria decoding, but that's when she's wearing, Melania is wearing flat shoes. Now, I noticed this all uh, when George News posted a lot of photos, and it was about different July 4th when he was president. I'm saying was, but he still is, you know, at least to the military. So Melania had flat shoes in some photos, and she had huge, thin stiletto heels in others on different July 4ths. She came up to about the same spot on President Trump's shoulder. I wonder why. It's because in one instance, I think she was Jackie and in the, and the, with the stilettos, and in the other instance with the flat shoes, she was Princess Diana. Now Jackie was five, or is 5'7". Princess Diana is my height, and it's 5'10". Some, some say 5'9". So it's either 5, 9, or 10. I'm not sure which because you can find both when you look up her height. So I know how she felt. She's probably looking down at a lot of people like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, petting them on the head. I don't know what that's mean, but that's how I feel a lot of times. I feel like I'm literally head and shoulders above a lot of people. <laughs> um so I know, yeah, Princess Diana and me. Hi, Princess Diana. Hi, Diana. I love you. <laughs> and I think she left me a, a message on, uh, what was it, three videos ago? You can go back and look at the comments. And it said it was from, you know how uh, Nancy Drew, DC, I had decodes on that, and then Nancy Drew left a comment to me and we went, we, I talked to her. Well, I think she made another comment about three videos ago before this one. And so it's on comments and uh, it's under the name Nancy, uh, not, so not Nancy Drew, Nancy Brady. And what everybody says that she said her name was Nancy Drew DC is Kelly Brady. Okay, so I know it's confusing if you haven't followed this, but okay, so Nancy Drew DC shows us what's going on in Washington DC. And uh, I've been in two or three videos on that. You can look at, I have a playlist on it. So look at my homepage and then look across the menu bar and you'll see playlists and you'll see different categories. So Nancy Drew DC, uh, made a comment and I answered her. So recently she made a comment, but it wasn't as Nancy Drew. This is what I'm thinking. It was as Nancy Brady. And so she took the Nancy and then what everybody thinks her real name is Brady, last name Brady. So she signed it Nancy Brady. And that's the only comment she ever made since 2013 when her channel was started on YouTube what or you know at least that name nancy brady was on this one video talking about jfk jr i don't know can't remember the title of the video and so she said well basically how do you think that diana changes her name because i was saying oh i think princess diana is playing one of the potus twos you know how we puts a hat down low and no tie and he's a little sounds up maybe a tiny bit different I'm not sure but at least the outfit is different and I said well if she said that so but she said it as Nancy Brady and I said well she can talk as different any which way she wants because of who she is she's one of the gods I mean all together she's one of the god so that's what I said. I don't know if she answered back. You know, that was just something I did today because I hadn't seen the, the comment. I kind of stopped looking at comments after it's been a few days, you know, and I I move on to something else. So I'm sorry if I miss your comments. Sometimes I go back and I read co old comments and I answer you. So if you get them through email, you'll see it. 
um, you know, if you allow these YouTube comments to come through email, you'll see it. So I think that she was talking as an alias and saying, well, what do you think? How does Princess Diana talk like him? So I gave my two cents. Uh, let's see. So in this same um, bite-sized audio story, a Father Brown story, and it was the Oracle of the Dog. I know I got off topic, so I'm bringing you back to where I was. Um, he said, another suggestion from one of you Druzes, which I, from what I understand, I mean, I, I might be wrong, but uh, Druze was the name of the Kennedys before they became Kennedys, and they were adopted into the Kennedy family. So the way I spell it is D-R-U-Z, like zebra, E-Z, E-S. So I, I'm not sure if I'm right. But is another suggestion from one of you Druzes, or Harry, Herbert, sorry, Herbert or Harry Druze, would, would struck, well, would struck, I didn't write the whole sentence out of the story. And Herbert was into horses, he was very traditional, and Harry Drews was the younger brother and an, an Indian police, he was in what they're saying, the, the country of India police, and broke red tape and took on big risks. And I remember on George News, quite a while back, he had a video where uh, he was showing, I, I think it was the Smithsonian, but you can look back on George News quite a ways back, maybe a year, and he doesn't have a lot of videos. And they were showing, um, opening a time capsule, and they were showing what was inside, and it was rounded up in red tape, and they broke the red tape, so that that's significant. Uh, let's see. He said at 55, 1455, this is a Simon video, a bite-sized audio. I had an argument with him, and Harry was like an, a detective and he, who was out of work, and he threw himself into his business. And he said crime couldn't be brought home to two or three people. Two or three. Well, you see numbers, and you go two, three, um, two, three, 23 is W for our junior, and three, two, the mirror, is Eve, and that's 32. And he said, least of all, Floyd. He brings up Floyd, like, like George Floyd. And we know George Floyd was fake. I mean, think about the um, size of the coffin. They showed his funeral, and the size of the coffin was like a tiny coffin, and... George Floyd was, what, 6'5", or I don't remember how tall he was. He was huge. He was absolutely huge. So that was an FF by the White Hats. So the, he even brings up a Floyd. So that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. And then he says at 2015, and that's at the five, I call it at the fives, and fives are comms. He says, Floyd was as innocent as a harem scarum schoolboy. That's because he didn't do anything. It was all fake. And the, all the protests, I think, were faked with different people as actors. But I suppose it could be, could have been real and different groups were, you know, acting up. But it's just my opinion that it was, uh, you know, actors on our side. And then it said he was as innocent as a schoolboy in um, and then 20 minutes and 18 seconds was seen by everybody. And we have seen Junior. That's, that's a reference to Junior at 18. We have, everybody has seen him and they don't even know it. So then we have, oh, what do we have? And he would, this is part of the story. This man was uh, perched above uh, hedges. Likely he was clipping hedges. But all you could see was um, his fan of red hair. So you could see his red hair. Red is JFK, right? 27. And uh, Joseph Patrick Kennedy 
Junior that I'm always talking about had red hair and he was reincarnated into our JFK Jr. So in case you're new, uh, let's see. I, they're talking about a will and this gentleman says, I suppose not because you were talking about the signatures and the how valid this will was. I suppose not, said Father Brown, because this is from a Father Brown mystery, and you can watch Father Brown mysteries on, um, well, at least on Roku. I don't remember which channel, but like, like uh, Acorn, things like that, Father Brown mysteries, and they're, they've got to all be coded. Um, said Father Brown, at 2132, he said, there would have to be two witnesses. So we have a two, right? 21. We have three as well, two and one. And then 32, right? 32 is Eve. Flip it. And you have 23 and W. So the two witnesses, just like in Revelation 11. So they don't leave the earth plain for too long. They're, they're in hell. They're, they're in hell. They're judged. They're in hell. They come back to heaven and they're right here. It's very quick from what I understand. So don't freak out. I hit the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm not getting very far, you guys. It's terrible. Um, and he said, the lawyer came about uh, the day before. Some, I did it because it's a 35. Um, POTUS 35 is JFK. He said, he, the lawyer, was sent for again that day as the old man had a doubt about one of the witnesses. He's wondering, I think it's President Trump, wondering about one of the two witnesses. Like, are we going to go through with this? What's going on? Like, are you going to run away again for the third time? That would be the third time if, they, if, if you count now. Um, and he, the father, basically... The older man had to be reassured at the end. So I've rambled a long time. Look at you. Okay, I want you guys to see. I have not been slacking off while I've not been doing videos. Are you ready? Like, are you re I hit it again. Look at this stuff. There's just so much stuff. So I'll come back. I, I record these all at once. So I will come back. And in a couple of days, I will put another, another one up. Because uh, it's a big production for me to do these videos. Because I'm an old grandmother. i got to fix my face. You know what I mean. I mean, I, I can't just come on here like some younger people do. I can't do it because nobody would watch. So anyway, um, I have my donation sites at the end of the video. Like Patreon, Venmo, all that stuff. All that stuff. I think there's four different ways. And of course, in the beginning of the channel, when you first look at the video, there's a blue highlighted join when you look at the video. Uh, and if you join, you get different perks and I'll do little things for you, you know, something you might like. And I appreciate it. And even if it's 50 cents for these other things like Patreon, I do not judge people. And it would help us with all our medical bills. And I love you guys. And as I always say, take care of each other. Like if somebody's having a hard time or sounds sad, please make a comment back to them and, and perk them up because some people are having a very hard time right now. This has been quite long and drawn out. But I know it's planned this way. I don't think it's an up in the air thing like some people do. I think it just has to happen this way. So let's all like support each other and if you can, contact each other on different sites like Telegram or whatever. I'm on Telegram, Real Mrs. Handy Are You. And I know I don't interact very much, but if you talk to me, I will try, you know. And uh, I have Mrs. Handy Are You chit chat. I hope you all join because it's nice. It's just nice to be able to post things. That's where you can post what you want. So anyway, I love you guys and I hope you're able to enjoy some stuff. I know it'll get serious at some point, you know, more serious than what I'm talking about, but we're going to make it, you guys. Think about the end and getting over the hump, you know. It'll be great and beautiful. Bye.